Koreans in Japan. Big to protect the clothes from hair and makeup. Ohayou gozaimasu. Today's my first day, well no, like my second day in Tokyo and um, it is humid out here. I, people have been telling me this is like the worst month to travel. It's, it's pretty humid. I've been standing here in the spot filming and catching up on Instagram stories and my legs are, are kind of, I've felt the first drip of sweat rolling down my leg. But this is insane. Look, we are here. Tokyo is a sprawling cosmopolitan city, a polite and orderly culture steeped in traditional and culinary arts. It also has a history of mixing tradition and innovation. And although I'm half Japanese, like any other country, Tokyo can present some fun culture shock for travelers like myself. Here's my first impressions of my first 48 hours in Tokyo. Upon arrival, what really surprised me was Tokyo's dense crowds. That's because Tokyo and its prefectures holds a population of up to 13 million people. And while there's plenty of space per person, these are some of the biggest crowds I've seen in a city, let alone crossing a street. Vending machines are ubiquitous in Tokyo. They're virtually everywhere, which is good when you're looking for a cold drink. The going range for these type of drinks are probably roughly around a dollar. <laughs> But they even have vending machine restaurants. And I think this has to do with Tokyo folks being busy and needing quick convenience. Despite the fact this is fast food, food in these restaurants are still prepared by hand and made with care. Yet another vending machine restaurant. This one has pictures on the button so that you can see what you're ordering or what the, the dish is. Japanese luxury toilets or toto toilets are something you might find in public restrooms. They've got a remote on the side where each button has a feature such as the day, front or back. There's even a button for flushing sounds so you can have a bit of privacy when you do your business. What I loved is that Tokyo seems to think about motherhood. In Tokyo, you'll occasionally find mother and child stalls with special seats for the child. Sometimes they even have their own private family bathroom. As part of Tokyo's dense crowds, sometimes pedestrian traffic during rush hour can be a challenge. When you're arriving early in the morning when all the businessmen or the business folks are like passing through the, the metros, it's kind of it's kind of hard to cross. You have to wait to kind of like stick your way zagging through. Um, like joining the flow is another thing I found. It's almost like trying to figure out when to jump in when you're skipping rope. Um, because the flow can be pretty continuous and in one direction. Uh, it's almost people stream in a line. It's a fairly organized line. One directional stream. So I'm gonna either have to wait for the flow to die or I'm gonna have to like zip. Wait, I'm watch to see. Okay. I hope this is the right line because I don't think I want to go back. A lot of my initial excitement happened in Tokyo metro stations. But you'll need them to get around. Okay, so I think I've got the stream of traffic right here because I was coming in and a lot of people were coming towards me. If you're going counter traffic, I think you just hug the outside. That's what I'm getting. The people who are going counter just kind of hug to the outside or I don't know. Maybe that's the flow of direction. Okay, let's let's just merge. Let's just be like a little tadpole swimming, merging with the pod. Another thing about Tokyo and Japanese culture is that it's very orderly. Take for instance standing in line while waiting for your train. There's definitely no pushing and shoving. Escalator etiquette. This is an unspoken etiquette you'll find in other Asian countries like Taiwan and Korea. The left side is for standing, right side is for passing. Do not stand in the passing lane. If you ride the metro, be prepared to walk, stand, and climb as well. Escalators and elevators can't always be relied upon. And this is why you should always travel light, or at least with carry-on. 
Tokyo, you'll always find directions and signs. The only problem is sometimes it can get to be a bit much. Okay, so this is going to Akihabara. You've got that side that's going down. You've got this side that's going up. And it's also color coded to sell them up. Some metros are big, like really big. You'll almost certainly get lost due to the fact they're hub stations with many connections. There may also be many signs. If you get lost, take a deep breath. Even locals get lost in some of these large metro stations. Whether you're looking for trains, a JR line, or an exit just to get out. But I'll talk more about my Tokyo travel tips in another video. Oh my god, I need to have a map. Okay. Tokyo, Ueno, Chiba. Shinjuku Station is actually a really large station. All of these places right here exist either in or nearby the station. These buildings are located in that direction. We've got a guy here to help guide the crosswalk and I guess traffic situation. Even though we have a, like, a crosswalk light, and a traffic light right there. From what I'm gathering, this guy is here to kind of help, I guess, guide the traffic in this little intersection right here. And actually, when I first noticed him, he kind of sounded like he was a director calling for action. So he's helping, I guess, be like the the crosswalk signal for the the pedestrians in the bus and that's just this small intersection right here or this weird kind of u-turn as a traveler i always have my eye out for two obvious and inevitable things the thing about stations they also have restrooms this is handy to have so while you might not find many uh, trash bins commonly available on the streets, you at least know that there's restrooms that are in the, the train stations. I feel like in the States, it's a completely different story. You've got a lot of trash bins everywhere and no restrooms in sight. In Tokyo culture, there's no smoking on public streets, except for where smoking is actually allowed. No smoking on the street. Bad. Wow, 2,000 yen. That's like $200. I was very excited to visit one of my favorite clothing shops, Uniqlo, which originates from Japan. But there are some cultural differences. Someone try on clothes in Japan. To protect the clothes from hair and makeup. Although we have a unique low in the West, it doesn't mean our sizes run the same as Japan's. It's a good thing they had fitting rooms here because the sizes here run a little small. Like a little small. Do you have a Apparently I'm like either a large or an extra large. Whereas normally I'm like a medium small. In a city that's mostly about walking, sometimes you just want to sit. I am in a convenience mart right now. Okay. Time to brave the heat again and go back out. I kind of did a, a quick rest, caught up on Instagram story, and cooled off. Basically, this can be part. There's really no place to rest on some of these streets in Tokyo. Um, sometimes convenience marts have like this little area here where you know if you get a drink or you get food, you can like eat there um, and just hang out. Some people even take work there and kind of work kind of like a Starbucks. Um, so I kind of did that for a while because it's so hot out. So now getting back to the road. I better get a drink before I go. But the cool thing is that, you know, so far I've noticed with that one at least, there's at least like an area by the window with sitting room. And you'll notice when you're walking on the streets in Japan, there's no real place to rest. I mean, I feel like, I feel like, yeah, you have to pull off to the side so other people can walk by. Um, yeah. So that's like an area with air conditioning. So I was very much attracted to it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of cool because you'll see like businessmen in there kind of like working and hanging out like a star, treating it like a Starbucks, like a Starbucks. 
just opened the door and the warm air came in. It was like, phew. safe to say it's pretty warm out today. Um, but these mini marts, I like them. I like them a lot. They're like family marts and 7-Elevens in Japan. They kind of like are convenience stores with a lot of, uh, of a variety of um, little meals and snack dishes and drinks. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, give it a share, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe for more of my solo travel adventures as I take you inside and knock off my bucket lists of travel. Let me know what you think of my video. Above all, may the girl be with you.